Okay, we're gonna be looking at mitosis, and mitosis is the specific dividing of the actual genetic material inside a cell, and then which ends up with two different cells. So if you're actually looking at a cell at any given time, most likely it's in the part of the cell cycle called interphase. Interphase is pretty big, diagrams show it anywhere between 70 and 85% of the total amount of time. Mitosis is the specific part where you actually see it dividing. And it's pretty cool because during mitosis, you can actually see the chromosomes as well underneath a, a simple light microscope. Uh, if you stain them, it can make it a lot easier to actually see, as you can see here. So scientists, scientists have given each of these like uh, arrangements kind of different names. So we call them phases, but it's just to help us identify uh, how soon the cell division process is going to be over or if we think it's about to begin. So I can tell from looking at these that this is prophase, this is anaphase, this is metaphase, and this is telophase. And I'll give you a couple tips in a second. Actually, no, that's pretty good. Well, metaphase looks like they're all lined up in the middle, and middle sounds like metaphase. Telophase actually looks like one of those old school telephones that I used to have when I was a kid. Nowadays, we've got pretty fancy phones, but um, looks like a telephone. Prophase, pro sounds like pre, it's a prefix that means before or in the beginning, so pro, this is before everything actually happens. And Anna, phase this looks like uh reminds me of time my friend anna was having a breakup okay so anna was having a breakup okay so this is anna phase and, and when she broke up a long time ago well she broke up uh over the phone on the telephone so anna phase telephone all right hopefully that confused you even more Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Would you see diagrams that look like this? You should be able to identify them. Let's talk about what exactly these phases are. Now, you can come back to this diagram. If you go to Google and then you type in any, any, you type in mitosis, you'll get a whole bunch of diagrams. The thing that's really confusing about all these diagrams, and this really confused me when I was studying this in high school, um, is that I understood that each cell has 46 chromosomes, but it's really hard for diagrams to show 46 chromosomes being divided and showing all of them. And so what diagrams do, and to make them look really pretty like these ones, are to just uh, scale it down. But that always made it really confusing for me to count the total number of chromosomes. So what is a chromosome? Like this is a chromosome right here, but at this given point, I also call this kind of little double X structure that's also one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids so the idea here is that sometime during um, interface sometime during interface there are 46 individual chromosomes 23 you inherited from mom 23 you her you inherited from dad so there are 46 chromosomes and that's the famous number for humans our it's called our diploid number and it's 46 every body cell that we have has 46 chromosomes. So in order to make this into two cells, to uh, do cell division, well, I have to end up with two cells uh, that are exactly the same. This is the process of mitosis. So the daughter's cells have to also contain 46 chromosomes. Well, the only way to produce 46 chromosomes here and 46 chromosomes here is if at some point my original 46 chromosomes have to duplicate themselves and turn into 92 strands. So that's what you actually see when you see things that are represented like this. So this is actually one of the original 46 chromosomes that has been temporarily uh, replicated. So this little strand is exactly the same as this strand next to it. So this was one of the original chromosomes that has been temporarily, temporarily duplicated. So if this were a full diagram, you would actually be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There would be 46 of these pairs here, okay? Um, I'm going to outline what is actually happening here. But So in other words, let me see if I can draw this out. If you see something that looks like this, okay, I consider this to be one chromosome one chromosome all right if i see it and it looks like this i don't call this two chromosomes if they're attached this is still one chromosome 
We still call it one chromosome because it is just the same genetic information that's been copied over twice. The only purpose of duplicating, of replicating, and making it look like this over here is just so I can, when I separate it, there'll be two exact copies. So that does not go from one chromosome to two chromosomes. So the correct terminology that we use here is, let's see if it's on this diagram anywhere. No, it's not, but we'll see this. Oh, it is. We call this one chromosome still consisting of two sister chromatids. So we call this a chromatid and we call the piece attached to it a chromatid. But overall, this is one chromosome. And after it's divided, see over here, after they've separated, this is back to, that's the uh, a chromosome. So this cell over here, if we split down here, this cell over here will have four chromosomes. This cell over here will have four chromosomes. <clears throat> the original cell has four chromosomes, each consisting of two sister chromatids. So what do we have here? So we have the prophase, I told you in the beginning, prophase, where you start to see the chromosomes, metaphase, where they line up in the middle, anaphase, where ana starts to split up, and telophase, where this whole thing starts to look like a telephone, an old school telephone. Okay, um, let's write down a few things that are important for this whole, these four stages here. Um, a good acronym to help you remember this, uh, should I back up a little bit? Okay, we'll see this in a second, is instant pudding made anytime. What kind of dessert do you like to eat? I like to eat instant pudding made anytime. Instant pudding made anytime. Pudding for prophase. Made for metaphase. Any for anaphase. And time for telophase. So instant, the I stands for interphase, which is the rest of the cell cycle. But Interphase is not considered part of mitosis itself here. All right, prophase. So really quickly, these are some characteristics of prophase. How do I recognize it's in prophase? Well, I can start to see the chromosomes because they actually uh, start to become shorter and fatter because of uh, supercoiling. During interphase, usually it just looks like uh, a mess, a, a blob that's long and stretched out, and we call it chromatin at that point. The nucleus is going to start to disappear. And microtubules, these are not always visible under a light microscope, but these are, think of these as little, uh, little fishing lines that will come out to help move things around. It's going to help to pull these chromosomes and chromatids apart. Metaphase, well, it's, this is the easiest to identify. Everything's lined up along the middle, which we can call the equator. Uh, it's kind of like a mini earth, I guess, because we do use the word equator and we do say the poles. So the poles are where the spindle fibers are going to come from and attach to the actual uh, chromosomes and it's going to pull apart the sister chromatids. The center part where these microtubules attach to are called the centromeres. So the point where uh, sister chromatids are attached is called the centromere and it's going to be separated from there. Separation. Anna phase Anna went through a phase of breaking up and you see the sister chromatids are separating the pairs of sister chromatids separate and are pulled towards the poles and each one has been attached to microtubules so you can kind of picture this it's like if you tied a worm in the midsection with a piece of string and started pulling uh, the two ends would be dragging like that so um, pretty good evidence evidence to support that only the centromeres have these actual microtubules attached to them. And finally, telophase, where you start to see two cells forming. Each one now has an exact copy of the original DNA that was in there. Mitosis is about cloning cells. Mitosis is about making uh, exact copies of cells. It's not about creating new sperm or egg cells. That's called meiosis not mitosis. So mitosis is good just for repairing cells or uh, it's a way of asexual reproduction if you're a single cell organism. <clears throat> the nuclear membranes are going to reform back around and now we can call these chromosomes again before they were chromatids and they uncoil, the cells divide and the daughter cells enter interphase. And each during interphase then the cell does its regular thing and makes proteins, uh, makes hormones, um, enzymes, um, carries out cellular respiration, various types of things. And eventually those cells can go through this whole process again one more time if, if it's necessary. So 
if you're looking at a picture like this, can you pick out? See, I can already, I mean, it's not very high resolution, but this is definitely a breakup going on. So this cell is undergoing anaphase. This cell right here, I can see a nice dark nucleus. That's probably somewhere in interphase. So I can see most of these are actually in interphase. This looks like metaphase. They're crushed around the center right there. That may be prophase. That may be metaphase. Mm. Oh, this one, I can see two nuclei forming. That's probably telophase. It might start to uh, separate a little bit. The way this happens in plant cells is slightly different just because you've got a cell wall that's quite rigid. So it, the, all the processes are the same, but just the actual dividing of the cytoplasm during the cytokinesis, cytokinesis is pretty, uh, is a little bit different. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions, there's another video that I posted before about meiosis, but I don't go through the steps of it, but I just I actually draw out all 46 chromosomes and show you how we actually count all of that up. That might be helpful for those of you who are having trouble uh, seeing some of the animation issues here. So, okay, uh, take a look at the next animation. All right, this is from pbs.org. You just type in how cells divide. They've got excellent resources here. Um, if you can see this, come visit it yourself, and then you can actually click through. But they're comparing mitosis and meiosis next to each other. I'm not going to discuss this yet, but let's just look at mitosis, and you can see this whole thing animated. On YouTube nowadays, tons of animations that are related to this, so go and have lots of fun. So right here, this is showing uh, during interphase um, where you can't really see specific chromosomes. It's all jumbled together. So we call it chromatin at this point. There's a nucleus and I can see a nuclear membrane wrapped around there. So what we start to see is the centrioles are forming and from here we'll get the microtubules. I can't remember if this animation shows some of that stuff. But here, the nuclear membrane is breaking down. Nuclear membrane is breaking down. I can start to see uh, chromatin chromosomes in here and uh, the chromosomes are not organized in any particular way here again see they're only showing four chromosomes and the reason why they're showing two different colors is because these ones came from one parent like your mom and these ones came from your dad see over here in meiosis when i'm making sperm cells and egg cells something different happens but let's ignore this side so look over here these four chromosomes are with instant pudding made anytime prophase next one is metaphase so i should be expecting these guys to move towards the equator and you can see this is one chromosome another one another one there's four chromosomes each one consisting of two sister chromatids so be careful how you actually name that <clears throat> Here they go, they're on their way to the equator, and there they are lined up. Remember, we're only paying attention to the left side here, the mitosis side. I can already see what's gonna happen. This is metaphase. Now, Anna is gonna break up, anaphase. Look at that, they start getting separated. The, chromat the chromatids have separated, but now there's four chromosomes here, four chromosomes here, and the cytoplasm starts to pinch off in the middle. Remember, think of this, this is a three-dimensional structure, so it's like a, Imagine a big balloon, sausage balloon, getting pinched in the center and somebody's squeezing in the middle and then it's going to pinch off and then seal the two ends and you end up with two balloons. So here we go, telophase, the nucleus forms back around and then cytokinesis, which literally means uh, cytoplasm dividing. Look at that! And you have two cells and we are happy. That concludes mitosis. Meiosis when you're making sperm cells and egg cells, well, you gotta continue another uh, another round. Because why? Because if you have a sperm cell that's gonna meet up with an egg cell to make a normal human, well, that sperm cell can have 46 chromosomes. It can only have 23, so that when you put 23 and 23 together, you get 46. Otherwise, you get something that is not human. Post any questions that you have, and thank you very much.